May, June 2017, that's the exam paper that we're looking at. Remember, exam technique is very important. So when you get this paper, let's say this is the paper that you actually get. And now you need to write the exam using this as a test run. Okay, this is what I would be doing ahead of time before next week when you start writing your actual exam. You need to sit with one of these or two of these or three of these within the next week or two or week, week and a half. And you actually need to do these papers as an exam. Okay, like a mock exam. Give yourself two hours, write the exam, and see if you'd be able to pass. I'm going to look... Okay, you did. You did it. Okay, great. All right, so after today, you'll have an answer or solution to this past paper, and then you can use that to mark what you've done. Right, so when I look at the proposed timetable, I can see I've got five questions here. You can see they're all around 24 minutes. Okay, there is one long question, which is for the general ledger and trust for 34 minutes, and you've got short multiple choice. Good exam technique, you're looking for this. Analysis of financial statements. Why? Because you can remember those formulas going into the exam. So while you're still fresh, in the first five, 10 minutes of the exam, I would go to question three, and I would look at what they're asking you for. Here's question three. 20 marks, 24 minutes. They've given you profit and loss, they've given you financial position, and they've given you some ratios that you're required to calculate. Okay, so there we go. We're going to take all of these, and we're going to write down the formulas. That's step number one. So we're going to start with question three, because that's good exam technique. We're going to bank easy marks, just for knowing our equations, just for studying them. Okay, so A is the solvency ratio. Let's go to that page that you had to study. 293, I think it was, hey? 263. 266. There's it, 263. Perfect. What do I want? I want the solvency ratio. their solvency. I write that down on my answer sheet and I should get a mark for doing that. Okay, leave space, then you write down the next formula. Okay, and this is what well, this is actually what I would be doing in the exam. Okay, so now I read the next one. The next one says interest cover. Right, so go from your memory and write down this interest cover. Take that formula, pull it through to your working and write it down. Okay, so you're getting marks for doing this. It's not a waste of time. It's actually good exam technique. Because you're fresh, it's the first five, ten minutes of the exam. You just studied these the night before. You know all of them off by heart. You can get full marks for this question as long as you've got the right equations. C, gross profit percentage. Here's gross profit percentage. Take that. Copy that. Paste that. Okay, D, trade payable settlement period. Trade payable settlement period, here's it. Trade payable settlement period, copy that, paste that, another equation. And the last one, E, this equation was inventory turnover rate. So go to the formula, inventory turnover rate, there's it. Copy that paste that. Okay, so now we go back to the question. Now we've written down all five of those equations. This is for 20 marks. So you're going to get 20% for knowing some of these equations and knowing how to calculate and um, work out the correct amounts. Notice all formulas and calculations must be shown and you round off to two decimal places. That's what you've got. Okay, so we've got everything here. We can go back to question one, solvency ratio, total assets over total liabilities. Where would I see that? I would see that in this statement, the statement of financial position. Right, do you see your total assets and total liabilities? Do you see your total liabilities? 
you agree? Okay, was that difficult? No. Okay, very easy. All you had to do was remember the equations. So, uh, let's shrink this so I can show you what I'm doing. Okay, total assets, solvency, equals total assets over total liabilities, which equals 721-990 divide by 649-517. Everyone happy with that? Easy, right? Ratios. Gives you 1.11. So what does that mean? That means you've got 1.11 assets to every one liability. Is the business solvent? Yes, we've got more assets than liabilities. It's, it's a good position to be in. Okay, there you go. That's the first ratio. Let's look at B. Interest cover. For interest cover, I need profit before interest and tax, and I need finance costs. So where do I get that? I need to go to this statement. Okay, so there's the information from the question. Do you see profit before interest and tax? Is it there? Matiba, you, you normally struggle with getting the EBRT, right? Okay, work it out then. What do you get? Let's pause there then. You work it out and then we'll... And then this is how we're going to do it. We're looking at profit for the year. There's profit for the year. 13, 4, 5, 3, uh, 4, 3, 5. Okay, we want profit before interest and tax. So you wrote the right thing down. Profit before interest and tax you less interest gives you profit before tax you less tax that gives you profit for the yeah do you agree does that make sense okay so those are the totals okay so what total have they given you in the question this one 13 4 5 3 do you know what the tax is? Well, there's no tax here because this is sole proprietor, right? So there'll be zero here. So that'll be 13, 4, 5, 3, right? Okay. Do you see interest? There we go. Interest is part of the finance cost, so 55,000, right? Okay, so how do I get this? Yes. Right, you need to add back the interest because do you agree you would have had a bigger amount, then you subtract the interest and then you have a smaller amount. So if I start at the bottom and I go back, I'm going to add the interest. Okay, so there's the numerator. So finance cost will be the interest. Yes, finance cost will be that. Right, so interest cover equals... 68435 divide by 55000 equals 1.2. So we've covered our interest 1.2 times. Hey? It's not bad at all. Okay, it's ratios. Ratios are easy. You, you'd be hoping for these in the exam. Yeah, so it, it takes practice. We did a lot of those last week as well. We did two of them. I did one, then you did one. Now we're doing another one. Okay, so hopefully you can see how to calculate that figure. Okay, next. Gross profit percentage. I need gross profit and I need sales. Do I have gross profit and sales here? Yeah. Yes. There's gross profit, there's sales. Do you see that? Gross profit, sales. Gross profit percentage equals gross profit of 528500 divided by revenue 771456 times 100 over 1 gives you an answer. Your gross profit percentage should be 67.5%. There's your gross profit percentage. Next, 
trade payable settlement period. Here you need an average trade payables. So trade payables is going to come from the statement of financial position. Where's my trade payables? There's it. Trade payables. Did they give you last year? Yes, they did. There's last year. Here's this year. Okay, so now I'm going to record that here. Average trade payables equals open brackets what I started with 9235 plus what I ended with 88517 close brackets divide by 2 gives me the average trade payables. There's my average trade payables. Credit purchases. I saw purchases earlier. Okay, there's purchases. All right, but the, the purchases here include cash purchases, right? Okay, so if I buy, I'm either going to buy for cash or I'm going to buy on credits. So whatever whatever's the cash, I need to subtract that from the total, gives me the credits. Okay, because cash and credit must make up the total. Right, so credit purchases equal total purchases minus cash purchases. So the total purchases was given as 264. The cash purchases was 145. The one minus the other gives you the credit purchases, 118. Okay, now we can solve for the trade payable settlement period. Average trade payables is 89376 divided by um, credit purchases 118800 times 365 equals Two hundred and seventy four days. That's how long it takes on average to pay my creditors. Got that. Not bad, right? Good. Next. E inventory turnover requires cost of sales and average inventory. I have cost of sales, there's cost of sales. Two four two nine five six. I just need the average inventory. Average inventory is opening and closing divide by two there's my opening inventory at the beginning of the year there's my closing inventory at the end of the year okay so nine nine two seven six plus closing stock one two oh three two oh close brackets divide by two equals average inventory equals 109 Cost of sales given in the question, so inventory turnover rate is going to be cost of sales of 242956 divided by average inventory, which is that, 109798, gives me a turnover rate of 2.2. Okay, there's your five questions, there's your 20%. Easy, right? Not too bad. Okay, so there we go. We've just covered question three. 20 marks, 24 minutes. It took us 13 minutes to do that. Okay, so now you're making up more time for a, a more difficult question. Okay, let's carry on. Exam technique-wise, go back to the proposed timetable. Right, so now I've done three. I'm looking for another easy question. I would be looking at five perhaps but it's multiple choice okay you know multiple choice in a worst case scenario if you can't do the calculations you can always guess an answer okay so i wouldn't do it now i'd rather do this the other shorter questions and then leave that just in case okay you should be able to finish everything quite comfortably all right but you never know okay so now i'm going to do question one or question two it doesn't matter both questions are out of 20 marks you like the accounting equation, so let's do the accounting equation question. Okay, the second question that we like, that we know we're quite confident with in terms of getting a good mark. 
okay, we know we're going to pass the question, we're going to build confidence. We're not going to do the more difficult question. Okay, there's two ways of doing past papers. You can either start with the most difficult question or you can start with the easy. It makes no sense starting with a difficult question. Okay, because now you're going to struggle to do it and it's going to knock your confidence a little bit as well. Okay, so always, 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 always do the stuff that you find easy, like what we just did now. Okay, now how good are you feeling? Pretty good. You got 20 marks, 20% 20 banked. Okay, now we can get another 30 and we can pass. Okay, and then we can even try to get a distinction. Question two. Counting equation, here's it. It's a short question, 24 minutes. Um, commence this question on a new page. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> commence this question on a new page. The following information from June relates to um, Shecky suppliers. Um, the entity is not registered as a VAT vendor. That's really good. Now, I don't have to worry about input VAT. I don't have to worry about output VAT. It's a lot easier. Notice what system is being used. Periodic. So what do I call inventory? Purchases. Okay, when you have the periodic system, you refer to inventory or stock of goods as purchases. That's revision. Okay, that's what we covered in the theory. And that's considered an expense. Purchases is an expense, not an asset. Shaky supplies enter the funding transaction in the month of June. Fine. And then you've got all the transactions. Again, always look at the required. Build your answer sheet. So I've got that. I need to now go to my answer sheet. Uh, let's do this on a separate page. So we did question three. Now we're doing question two. Okay. Question two requires me to draw up a table. Date here. Debit there. Credit there. Then I've got assets equal owner's equity or equity plus liabilities. Right, so I draw that up for myself in the exam. I want columns for those things. And now I'm ready to do the question. Okay, that's exam technique. Draw your answer sheet. Now go back to the question and answer it. Okay, so there's the first one. Transaction, day number four. Purchase inventory on credit from W for that after receiving a trade discount. What happens to trade discounts? You take it off and you leave it off. You don't record the trade discount. You record the net amount. Settlement discount of 8% will be awarded by the creditor if the amount is settled within 30 days. S intends to settle the account during June. So is the discount applicable? Yes, as long as they pay within the correct amount of time. Okay, they're not making a payment though in this transaction, do you agree? What's the focus in, trans uh, in the transaction for day number four? Purchase inventory. Exactly, buying inventory on credit. Okay, you know that when you buy inventory on credit, your purchases will go up and so will your liability. Right, there's your workings. Record the amount correctly. So creditors is a liability going up. Plus, um, I need to do a calculation. I'm going to do it separately just to show all workings. 1850 times, uh, well, minus 1850 times 10%. Okay, 1850 times 0.9 gives you 1665. 1665 is the net amount after a 10% trade discount. Purchases go up, so that affects owner's equity negatively. Your expenses go up, you're entitled to less profit, which leads to less owner's equity. Okay, we spoke about that last week. Uh, what are the effects of drawings and expenses on equity? And what is the effect of capital and income on owner's equity? Yeah, remember that. Great. Okay, that's the first one done. Day 11. 
issued a receipt to S for 950 for a payment received on his account. What's happening? Describe the transaction. Okay, when, when you issue a receipt, you're receiving cash. So what account is affected? When you issue a receipt, you're receiving cash. Yeah, you're receiving payments. Oh. Aren't you? Yeah. Okay, payment received on his account. All right, so if I pay you, what happens to your bank? Correct. Bank is an asset. Assets increase on the debits. What are you paying? Or what are they paying? They're paying their accounts. Debtors. Asset decrease. Asset increase, asset decrease. It's going to go here. Plus 950. Minus 950. And that's it. Make sense? Okay, next. 19. Cashed a check for 2,900. 1,800 was for the week's wages, and the balance was for restoring the cash float. Right, so if you're cashing a check, bank is going to go up or down? It's going to go down. So bank asset decrease. And it's decreasing twice. It's decreasing once because you're paying wages. And it's decreasing for a second time because you're paying for cash floats. Cash float is money kept in the cash register to give change. That's the definition for cash floats. Right, and that's all we have to do. Bank minus um, 1,800 for wages. And... The difference will be 1,100, right? That gives you 2,900. And that'll be for cash float. Cash float is an asset. So asset increase and asset decrease. Plus and minus there. And there you go. Another transaction recorded. Make sense? Great. 23. Issued a check to W to settle the outstanding amount for inventory purchased on credit earlier in... June. Have I, have I paid the inventory before the 30 days are up? Yes. yes, I have. So is the settlement discount applicable? Yes, it is. Okay, so what's going to happen to my liability? Well, this is when I bought, this is when I'm paying. So when I pay, my creditors is going to decrease. Creditors W. Liability decrease. It's decreasing because of two reasons. Reason number one, you made a payment. Asset decrease. Reason number two, you received a discount. Okay, there's your workings. That's what you guys would have done right at the beginning in week number one and two. Okay. All we need to do is get the amount. Well, there's the amount. This is how much we bought. Do you agree? That's the outstanding liability. So 1665 is what we're going to have to pay here. 1665 must be settled. Okay, how much discount do we get? 8%. Less 8% discount. Okay, so 1665 times 0 0.08 is 8% gives you that discount okay so the net amount the net amount is going to be the 1665 minus that discount there's the net amount right so you pay this and you receive that okay so bank asset decrease minus 1531.8 Okay, and your liability is also going down. Then you've got a liability going down, minus 133.2, and you've got an income that's going up. And there's the transaction recorded.
Okay, that's the difficult part of this question. Make sense? Perfect. Right, last one. Purchased a new photocopy machine on credit. If I'm buying a photocopy machine, is that inventory? No, it's equipment. It's something that I'm going to be using in the business, not selling. Do you agree? Okay, so even though you see the word purchase there, that doesn't mean purchases. It must be merchandise, goods, or stock for it to be purchases, inventory. Okay, so this isn't inventory. This is equipment. Right, so I would write down equipment, or I would even write down the word photocopier. Okay, what is happening here? Asset increase. That's the working. Brackets you don't show. That's your thinking. Okay, you can if you want to. I don't think they'll mind, but it's not necessary. I'm just showing it so you understand how to get there. And then it's on credit, so your liability goes up. Creditors, office suppliers. Liability increase. Okay, so asset increase plus 1370. Liability increase plus uh, 1370. And that's the end. Right, another 20%. Not bad. Now you've got 40%. You need 10% to pass. Okay. Right. So always, always, always do the easy questions. Right. You can pass by doing the easy questions. And then you can focus on getting a good mark, a distinction. Okay. Right. That's question two complete. Happy with that? Great.